I'm Brian Birch and I specialize in insurance finance change. I'm focusing on IFRS 17 and somebody asked me today, why would they use a subledger? There are a few reasons for this. Some of the benefits may be that you could trust and have confidence in your numbers. A lot of this stems from the detail that you get in a subledger. Essentially, it is a piece of software where you would hold much more detailed balances and more dimensions, more labels on those balances than you would in a general ledger. So you can look in to your numbers, you can analyze them over time, we can analyze them over many other dimensions. You can also see the effect of policy accounting policy changes that you could have because you can see so much detail. You can see the reasons uh, for changes and the effects of uh, different tweaks to your accounting and your data. And also it doesn't clog up your general ledger. You want to keep your general ledger um, speedy to be able to um, get the information. You want to be able to do things with that, consolidate things with that, and use it in different um, parts of the company. And you won't necessarily want huge amounts of information in there. So there are some of the benefits, uh, the confidence, the, the amount of analysis you can do, the, uh, and seeing the effects. So the detail, uh, you can Put a lot of detail in the subledger, and uh, you, can, you should be able to drill down into that detail. Uh, the dimensions that you may have may be much wider than you would get in a general ledger, and you may be able to put attach more uh, labels essentially into each journal, each each piece of accounting information than you would otherwise would be able to do. There are controls and balances and user controls and um, security that would be built into a or an off-the-shelf subledger that would be, take a lot of time to build into a database. Some of that automatic accounting would be holding the information about the time, the accounts, also dealing with open periods and closing, dealing with roundings, dealing with many currencies and it will be just be harder to, to build this in a database. You're much better off to use software that is already configured and uh, set up to be a, a subledger. It'll have a lot of the accounting uh, methods and processes already um, built into it. At some point, the auditors will need to see the data and they may well want to drill down and see where uh, information from a general ledger comes from. So you, you can go to the subledger and drill down into a lot of detail. Uh, the detail of the journal, but also a lot of those uh, labels and uh, dimensions that you've attached onto it to be able to s report and see things in different ways. Now, in terms of IFRS 17, advantages of a subledger means that you can you can allocate um, costs um, in, in different ways, and you can deal with the, the time and the benefit, uh, essentially the insurance benefit. You can deal with the service and the time elements uh, well by allocating. Uh, some numbers across uh, uh, different parts of business and you can do this at huge volume with a, a powerful subledger. You can process and track business events and um, choose business rules that apply to those and also uh, choose how you have the posting processes that um, are, are enact, enacted on that. So um, it's possible to have with different general accepted accounting principles, you could have one business event and different um, journal postings for US GAAP, for IFRS 17, for US GAAP. There's different ways of showing the same uh, business event. For IFRS 17, you may need to deal with uh, different measurement models and a subledger will be able to track uh, which information is processed in what way. In IFRS 17, there are multiple ways you may need to split down some figures. Uh, what figures are, what contracts are onerous, um, splitting out reinsurance outwards, new business, and also splitting out assets and liabilities. So there are uh, these fields, but also um, fields for legal entity, for business unit, for type of business. And you want to be able to put a lot of different fields into this to be able to configure it relatively easily and have it not slow down the system, still have a very fast system that can process um, millions of transactions <clears throat> or many many millions of transactions. There's also an IFRS 17 a, a dual view where you'll be looking at the insurance contract liability in terms of the liability for remaining coverage and the the liability for incurred claims but also they those numbers will add up but they're also looking at it for in a future cash flow um, a risk adjustment and a CSM 
a contractual service margin um, viewpoint. And for paragraphs 101 and 101, you need to be able to um, analyze these and reconcile between them. So you'll need the, the drivers of the like county lines that are related to those. So that's quite a lot of information to be able to um, label and be able to report on. And a subledger will be able to do that because of just the power and the amount of amount of labels you're likely to be able to put on uh, and attach to, to information. So hopefully this will help free um, you up to let the software do its thing and, and powerfully manage a lot of um, detailed accounting entries and to be able to free you up to look at the accounting changes and accounting policies that are needed and to understand the effects of those and understand what is the best policy for your business and to be able to understand the impact on the business and on the liabilities and the profit and loss um, to that those that data and the, those accounting policies uh, make. An advantage of an off-the-shelf system is that it will be ready, uh, it's either ready or will be ready uh, very soon, whereas building it could take an awfully long time. There's a risk in building it. Part of this is about being ready uh, in a year's time to be able to do a parallel run uh, in 2020 to be ready for 2021 and uh, a year is not that long in terms of installing um, large-scale software so it's useful to have an off-the-shelf system more in terms of um, sort of general I I IT less accounting uh, the user experience should be good the architecture and the future proofing and then connecting to the cloud should be ready with a uh, with the right uh, right software there should be a path to get to that and um, the user should be able to focus on the accounting and uh, the things they're good, they know about and are good at and not um, database uh, programming or, or, or something like that. And also a sub-ledger should be able to connect to the general ledger obviously but connect to reporting if you want to report in detail level uh, straight off a sub-ledger. They are some of the, <clears throat> some of the advantages and, and uh, areas uh, that we may talk about when we think about a, a sub-ledger, but uh, a lot of it is about freeing you up to let the software do what it's good at, processing large volumes of data to build up um, confidence um, by people and the auditors in that data and to be able to s report in that data uh, in many dimensions, both in IFRS 17 and also business uh, viewpoints to be able to um, make sure you get the information you want and uh, that's accurate and well controlled from an accounting point of view. I hope that's been helpful. I hope that's been helpful and I will do more videos on other I for 17 or accounting related topics.